Let's talk about the tenant fee ban. What's your thoughts on it? Um, I've changed my thoughts on it somewhat. When it was announced, I was very angry, very frustrated, and I still am to a, to a certain degree because there's, there's a lot of work that goes in, and because of a certain selection of people that have power to say and do certain things it's been seen to be a good thing you know all agents are rogues all agents charge uh, unscrupulous fees well actually when i set my business up in october i was i could have gone in thinking i'm not going to charge tenant fees but i'm delivering a service i still have overheads to pay i've got staff to pay i don't drive around in a branded car i don't even have a car at the moment i use my vespa to get around town because it's convenient and I want to keep costs down. So we do a lot of work for that fee. And because a lot of agents have done things like, you know, we're charged 300 for a referencing fee, then your application fee is 125. And if you want to move in on a Saturday, that's another 60 quid. Some agents, exactly. And they've ruined it for the good. And the good among us will charge a fair fee. You know, if you want to get a mortgage approved, should you not pay a fee for that? Mm -hmm. You know, if you sign up to a car leasing agreement, is there not a fee for that? I mean, it's preposterous. We are, we are providing a service. And I, I did a little video thing on it a little while ago where I had a tenant that failed referencing due to adverse credit. It was a county court judgment they had from a couple of years ago. They're very lovely people, very good tenants. They paid their rent on time every time, and they were unfortunate because of an ex-partner. Now, post-tenant fee ban world, agents will look at that scenario and think, oh, no, okay, they failed, they've not supplied the correct information, we're going to keep their one week's holding fee and we'll go to the next one. Or do you provide that service to the tenant where you say, okay, right, I'll talk to the landlord and explain the situation, because that tenant paid the rent in advance and they became a very, very good tenant. So it's a bad thing for tenants, the fee ban, because ultimately that money's got to come from somewhere. Agents aren't government-funded. You know, so we need to get the money from somewhere. That has to be the landlord, or like many agents are, streamlining their business and offering different services, which ultimately tenants can pay for. Um, but then you've got landlords are ultimately going to front the cost and then put the rent up. So the way I looked at it is, say, you pay 250 in tenant fees, one off for your tenancy you move into, and uh, that's it. That's fine. But take those fees away, that money's got to go to the landlord. The landlord will say, well, I'm going to increase the rent by £50 a month, so they're paying three or four times the amount over the year, every year, which isn't great. And then you'll have the mass exodus of landlords, which we're having. I mean, one in five landlords are selling at the moment, whereas, you know, six years ago, it was a buy-to-let heaven. Haven. But then if there's less supply, who the, who the hell is buying them? Say again. Who the, if landlords are selling, then no one's buying. Yeah. They, there's no no one to sell to. Is well, there? isn't that funny? How the market, not a lot of stuff's moving at the moment. Isn't that a funny consequence? So you have a lot of agents that say we're not moving. Prices are being reduced. There's a lot of stock on the market. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Because all of a sudden landlords are now selling. So we're now awash with stock. It's bizarre, isn't it? Any time will tell, my friend. Well,